Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we are installing our pin foundations, our diamond pier pin foundations on the hillside for this deck build. And basically what it is, it's a cement pier block with four holes cut, drilled through it. And then we put these steel rods through the footing and they drive them down five feet into the ground. It creates this massive web bearing load capacity. And it's a really great option for doing something on a hillside where instead of doing this, we have to drill two foot round by five foot deep holes. So we don't wanna do that. That's like cement trucks with the concrete. So uh, this is a great alternative to what we're doing. We had to dig them down into the hillside. So we had to kind of cut and pull away some of the dirt. So we get our footing down enough so that it, it meets, meets the... All right, so we're cutting away the hillside to get the pin found, or the foundation deep enough so that all the pins are safely and deeply into the ground. So that we have the owner of the company and a couple of other guys out here all making sure that we're doing this properly, training us on the install, and there's a lot to see today. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one. There are ways we could have tried to dig it up. In this case, I think we just spin it. Yeah. You ran into a rock on the one pin. Let's pull it out. Yep. You ended up hitting the rock dead on. Many times it's going to push through that rock. In this case, it's just basically bouncing. So we want to remove the pins. And how we're doing that is just trying to spin the pin with the pipe wrench. And we're using a levering action. So we're going to lock the pin here and then lock that up and pull. And this one's pretty loose already. So we have a good video online on how to do that too. But basically it's twisting the pin and prying them out. Now that we've got them out and we're out here, we want to make sure they're not sticking in the ground at all, just inside the head. Now I'm going to put my foot on the corner, or two of us, we're going to turn it right in the same spot. Now we're going to be avoiding that rock because instead of going here, that pin is now coming over here. So we're going to go a little more. There we go. Pretty much on the center line because we just spun it in the hole before it was coming this way. Now it's going over here. So we're going to try to avoid it. So grab it level. Okay, now tap it in. Go back to the same process we had before of installing it. Okay, that's good. I'll jump on this side. Nice even pop with the hammer just to get it started. Okay, and you can try that side. Just grab jack hammer. Yes, sir. Okay, now you want to go ahead and get the jackhammer on it. Go, same process again, a foot or two back and forth. How you feeling? Tired. Already? Sweaty. <laughs> That's just one. No. Amazing. Oh, I didn't see those. <laughs> Amazing. This thing gets heavy after a while, man. I bet. What was the question we were talking about? about if you... The caps. Oh, oh the about caps. if it bends, if you can't get it out? Yeah, if you can't get it out. Good question. That last yeah. one we hit the rock, we had the plastic tip on the end. And that's to keep the dirt out for the inspector. Um, if you take the cap off, sometimes it'll chisel through the ground better, but then they can't inspect with their tape measure. And if you hit a rock when the tip is off, it can damage the end and then you can't pull them back out. So that tip is pretty crucial to have it on. And if you on can't the, get it out, then, then you pull all the pins and lift it out. Pull the whole thing. Yeah, so it's real versatile. I mean, you, can, you can't do that with a concrete pier, right? With this, you can do it in five minutes if you pull it out, not even. So, good way to go. Did you guys find part of a tree? I think this no, concrete. I get 10% of the treasure.
So Ralph, uh, you kind of you've come out here all the way from Minnesota. You've way. helped us put these pin foundations, these diamond piers, into the ground. But this is kind of an ex a little more of an extreme install. So I you know I know we can use these on flat ground, but what other uh, ways can we use these products besides on a deck? Yeah, you know, Diamond Pier was developed 30 years ago for a lot of commercial projects. So we do have a commercial side, too, where they actually build homes on different versions of them. The one we use today is for uh, deck and backyard projects. So we kind of maxed out the slope on this one. It's two-to-one slope we want to have for sure. Um, but we have other products that you can do uh, different kinds of homes and accessory buildings, uh, walkways, trails, maybe even uh, signage and things like that. So okay. Pin Foundation, you can reach out to us on our website. We can talk about a lot of Triple W dot uh, pin foundation diamond is it diamond pier? Diamond pier dot com. Dot com. Okay. Diamond pier dot com. Also, um, they make a couple different sizes. We're using a bigger sized uh, DP seventy five. DP seventy five, and that's just that's the weight of the head. So the head is seventy five pounds of concrete, mm -hmm. and we have a sixty three inch pin. We also have a DP fifty, which is smaller. Mm -hmm. That's about a fifty pound head in a fifty inch pin. And what's great about that, that's that's equivalent to a 20 inch round pier. So instead of digging that hole four feet deep and using all that concrete, making a mess in the yard, you can just put these in quickly. And normally, even with like uh, any shrubbery and things like that, you can pull that back, take just a little chunk of dirt out, set it in, drive it in, and you're done. Super no, clean. No mess. Clean, very friendly environmentally. We, that's how we started 30 years ago. Right. Uh, in wetland areas, highly critical dune areas, uh, where you want to protect the area and the environment. Around cool. That's why in this area, in fact, we do have a full housing development that are on our commercial steel product. That's, That's really cool. Can't that. wait to see some of that. So the, the concept behind these piers is you, do, you, you drive the pins on, on a cross hatch, kind of like this, and then when, when you load the footing, it gives it a massive load bearing capacity. So for what we're doing, instead of drilling a two foot deep or two foot round by five foot deep hole on this hill, we're able to use these. Our engineer approved it. The city of Tacoma approved it. So we're locking them down on this hillside, and that's how we're going to build up this deck. So Ralph, um, yesterday we had to pour some standard footings in the ground, mm -hmm. and we were done early, but it still took us um, six hours to. Well, that was just to pour, or was that to dig them? That was just to pour. Just so pour. we had to we had to dig the footings the, the first, first day. day. That was five hours. That's one day. Then we poured. That's one. And then so then we had a short. We're short time, so we had to leave early. So we lost three hours that day. Then we poured the next day for six hours, so we lost a couple of hours that day as well. And now those footings are ready to go. But uh, with you and your team guys, and your guys here, we did 10 footings in yeah. three hours. Not even, is it? Yeah, three hours. Well, <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, well, I don't think we really got started right. until a little bit later. So um, in about three hours, and now we can start building on these footings straight away. Right. So um, that's amazing to me that, yeah. that you, you speed things up. Uh, the, the inspection process as well, the inspector can come inspect the footings once they're installed. And put a tape measure down inside the pipe. That way we're inspecting from the top of the pier instead of from the bottom. So there's no waiting. You still need it inspected, but they can do it any time as long as it's exposed on the top and they can get their tape measure down inside. So as soon as you get these piers in the ground, let's say it's a, a level job site, you can do six DP50s in an hour, you build right away and you're awesome. not waiting days. So yeah. that save you a couple days up top. So that's definitely a few benefits to using this system. Um, we think it's phenomenal, and we really like the way, it, how easy it went in. Even on a difficult hillside where it's slippery and, and steep, we're still able to get all these footings in, get them lined up, get them ready to go. Now we can start setting some beams, ready to go. Awesome. We'll get her done. Awesome. Great Thank stuff. you so much. How are you? How's the arms? Good to see you, man. The see arms? You. Yeah. Oh. Lifting up the jackhammer. Yeah. Good. It's like right toward the end when you're getting it in is when your arms start to get tired, but then you get a break until the next hole. And I got covered in grease from the jackhammer. That was awesome. Fun. All right, so we have our diamond pier pin foundations in, and it's on us now. We're ready to start framing. So first thing I got to do is justify some elevation on this retaining wall, and then we need to mount some of these Simpson brackets onto the wall so that our beam has a place to be locked in and then they extend out over the top of these pin foundations and that's how we're just gonna start framing the lower deck. All right, so we've got our uh, Simpson brackets and these are the ABA 46Zs. These are gonna be for our beams and we're using um, 5 8 inch 
washers and nuts, uh, heavy duty stuff so that it will help hold the bracket in place uh, and keep the bracket from ever being torn off of the nut. And what it ends up looking like when you're finished is like so. And then they have a little slot in the bottom of the bracket so that we can move it around if we need to um, get within our line uh, for all of our brackets. This particular one's going all the way up against the concrete. How are things going? Good, I'm just trying to justify an elevation of the, where the deck's gonna be and then I can start subtracting off of that for heights. It always takes a little bit longer in the beginning to figure this stuff out, but once we know our heights and we have our elevations and we snap some lines, then everything's good. So, a little bit time consuming, but we're getting there. You figure it out? Getting there. Lasers are so handy when it comes to figuring things out. So I know where the top of my deck is in correlation with the corner of this retaining wall. And since we're using the retaining wall as part of our structure, I can kind of figure the elevation of this deck and then where my other deck needs to start and then I can subtract the elevation of that and I'll know where the bottom of my beam needs to go on this wall. And then I'll figure that out on the far end. And then I will snap a line on this wall. And then we will know where the bottom of the beam needs to go for this whole lower deck, which is kind of nice. We're gonna have to take some of this out, but to get this line across here, we have to pull this away from the wall and pull all this crap back. Cause we need to, we need to chuck a line across this wall, basically 19 inches. No, I guess we don't need it if it's working that well. Why are you doing this? So we're going to be putting a beam all the way up against the brick. Um, and these brackets we have to get over as far as we can. And the people that um, re bricked this house, they just didn't clean the edges up very well, as you can see all the way around. So I'm just knocking it off where it's flush from the brick so that the beam doesn't get no, uh, have any obstructions. So in my world, um, in, it, inch and three quarters is a really important measurement. It's something that's half of something else. So it's half of a two by four. A two by four is two, three and a half inches wide. Center point of a two by four is an inch and three quarters. Also four by, four by six, four by eight, four by 10, four by 12. All half distance of that is an inch and three quarters. I did a center mark for all my footings. This is the center point of the beam, so I have to measure over an inch and three quarters to make it happen. So that's what that's all about. Why are there so many holes, different holes on the side here? Okay, so the round holes are the mandatory fasteners that you have to put into the bracket. The triangular holes are for hurricane wind resistant. Um, so if, if you want to go bulletproof, then you add fasteners into everything for hurricane. Uh, we're not in a hurricane prone zone, so not so much worried about us. Since we're anchoring into concrete, we're going to hit every single circular hole. Usually I only do four, but for this build, we're going to do all eight. But we're not going to do the triangular ones because it's overkill. Um, we're going into concrete, not timber. So, but on the sides, we'll probably, we probably will add a couple extra fasteners because we're trying to get that pull away for us as tight as we can up against this wall. So, um, good question. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys learned something about our diamond piers today. Tomorrow we're going to be setting some posts and putting up some beams and starting to run some joists. So we'll be framing tomorrow and then uh, the next day we'll just be framing for quite a while from here on out. So now that all of our foundations are in and our footings are in, that's what's next. Uh, if you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time we put out fresh content, please also click the bell icon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.